Hey everybody and welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be doing an, a repaint of the M3A Interceptor from Star Trek X-Wing Miniatures game. Uh, this is going to be a pretty straightforward repaint overall and I think I'm just going to get to it but I am going to try to walk you through the entire paces of doing this repaint. I think I've got a good set of I think they're a good setup here that will allow me to uh, really have you follow my process uh, as well as I can. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, mask off uh, the little base here. And I'm just going to use a little putty. This is, uh, this is poster tack. It's like that blue stuff, or white stuff, or gray stuff, uh, that you can get, like at stationers, or, you know, the market even, really, for holding posters. And it doesn't really work very well for that purpose. But uh, as a masking material, it's not too bad. Uh, if I have a complaint about it at all, is that it tends to be a little sticky. Not so much that it pulls the paint off, but you definitely want to be... Um, aware that it can sometimes be tough to get off of fine details so yeah you just be careful with it and that is that so um, as many of you know from watching my other videos uh, what I don't do any more as I did in some of my earlier videos and if, definitely if you've seen my um, A-Wing video I don't strip the paint anymore it, it really is unnecessary so we're just gonna move straight to um, the initial base coat all right so uh, this is the colors we're using for the base so the, let me show you real quick what the uh, color scheme is supposed to be all right so there we've got uh the it's really just white and blue uh straight white and blue but if you look over here you'll see that i've got a couple of colors in the palette here and this is really just for illustrative purposes uh this is of course white uh, and this is uh vallejo game color or game air sorry stonewall gray which is one of their light grays now, personally, I would uh, be inclined to just use the Stonewall Gray, um, but since it's clear that white is the intended final color, I'm actually mixing a 50-50 mix of the white and Stonewall Gray, and what you're going to end up with is something that really does look white, uh, but is not white. And I don't usually st ever start with white, except maybe as a primer. And the reason for that is because once you've hit white, uh, there's nowhere to go to highlight from there. White is as white is as bright as you can possibly be. So uh, I tend to stay back from white and save white for high highlights. And yes, I am using an airbrush to do this, but uh, certainly not necessary for you to use an airbrush to do this. You could do this with uh, thin layers of, of paint with a brush. All right, and now we can let that dry. Okay, so uh, I've let this dry out some, um, really like 10 minutes, not very long. It, it, especially when applied uh, with an airbrush, the paint doesn't need very long to dry. So now I'm just gonna follow the plan for where the paint's supposed to go. And what I'm gonna be using is, uh, this is P3 Signar Blue Highlight. And uh, this is, a thin mix of uh, Liquitex matte medium and when I say thin mix it's really it's a 50-50 mix and I like to thin down my paints with medium 
rather than just water because it gives me a smoother finish, a more controllable outcome. Uh, and I discovered that I liked doing this when I started using my leftover airbrush paints for brushing, um, just for touch-up, and it turned out that it was kind of a fantastic uh, smooth mix of paint for brushing. So I went ahead and started utilizing those that same uh, thinness of paint uh, with the with the th with the airbrush thinner airbrush medium not thinner, um, and recently when I ran out of airbrush medium, I decided to just thin down some uh, matte medium that I had left over uh, in a 50/50 mix. Seems about the same um, thinness as the airbrush medium, uh, with the added benefit of having a little bit of uh, matte agent in it as well so that the it keeps the paint from being quite as shiny as it is with uh, um, with the airbrush medium so anyway I'm gonna move in here and I'm just gonna carefully start getting this in and now I have a line to follow which is good uh, because really excess paint should just drop into uh, that panel line and I find this a little bit difficult I've always found this difficult to um, paint under the camera because I can't I usually paint with my subject practically in my lap so you may not see this whole thing I'm going to show you enough to give you a sense of what I'm doing here uh, and then I'm going to have to do it in my own way so that I can actually do this without screwing it up but yeah just this is very thin very thin coats and I'm not trying to get a perfect coat in the first try you can already tell that just by looking at how uh, transparent this color is I'm just trying to get it blocked in And kind of ideally I would kind of like it to flow into that panel line but it's not a hundred percent necessary that's going to get um, filled in later and I don't want this panel line to necessarily get overfilled all right so we've got that side and we can do this side I always write, wipe off the excess paint on my fingers or thumb or whatever, usually my thumb. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up on my own. Uh, let me just point out that, of course, this is a first coat and I'm, I'm just blocking in all the colors and then in subsequent coats I'm going to um, get a nice even coat of color so when I bring this back uh, you'll see a full even even colors and I'll tell you how many coats it took all right so uh, I've got a nice reasonably uh, flat coating of blue on there uh, it took kind of I guess two and a half coats it took two full coats the coat that you saw one more like that and then uh, final coat to do touch up 
and I didn't really have a guide for the underside so I just kept the wingtip color and kind of wrapped it around um, and I think it continues well down there and I think that's going to look pretty good so now I'm going to let this dry um, because the next step is going to be some washes and I just want to make sure that everything is completely set before we do that so uh, let's let this dry and we'll be right back. I just realized there was another step that I could do uh, while I wait for uh, the blue to be safely dry and that is I can do the canopy. Um, not much to this I'm going to try to keep the uh, um, the canopy um, cover, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what it, the supports. There you go. Canopy supports. I don't know if that's what it's called, but that sounds good. Makes me sound smart. I got the smarts. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, try to keep the paint off of there, even though it's not that important because I'm going to be painting that gray. Um, I'm actually going to change brushes. Just for your own information, this is a Winsor Newton Series 7. I believe this is a zero, size zero. I'm going to switch over to a Rosemary & Company size zero. Why, you might ask? Well, I've been discovering that uh, I really like the Rosemary and Company brush for doing fine detail. Uh, Rosemary and Company is a brush that comes out of the UK, strangely enough, so it is the Windsor Newton. Um, the bristles are a little stiffer and uh, it doesn't come to quite as fine a point as the Windsor Newton, which normally would seem like a negative, but in some situations I really like having a little blunter tip. And this is uh, this is one of those situations, you know, it, for some reason, well, I guess the, the combination of the stiff bristle and the little blunter tip means that I find it easier to get in tight and know exactly where my brush is going to be um, most of the time. So this means that specifically I, I'm having... Uh, really good results when painting eyes. This would be so much better if I was just doing this the way I normally paint. But yeah, for eyes, uh, this is my new go-to tool. Uh, ever since I switched to using this brush, I find painting eyes much easier. And It seems strange that a specific brush and its particular properties would make that much of a difference, but it really, really does. Um, if you follow Kickstarter at all, uh, WAMP or W-A-M-P, I'm not really sure how that's supposed to be said. In any case, they're doing, uh, or recently finished a Kickstarter for some brushes, and I actually um, kicked money into that because they are actually being made by Rosemary and Company. And because I like their brushes in general anyway, I figured it, it was at least a safer bet than buying brushes from somebody who either says they're making them themselves and they're not, or you don't know where they're getting their brushes from. And, you know, I'm not... <coughs> Games and Gears. <coughs> Games and Gears. Uh, yeah, so better to know where your brush is from coming from and knowing that it's coming from a source that knows how to make brushes. Anyway, let me finish that up and then we'll come back and then we'll start working on the washes. All right, I think that's dry enough. Uh, so I'm going to be using uh, Citadel Shade Null Oil, which I use a lot for this purpose. I like it. It works. It works really, really well. So I'm going to pick a another brush. I think the rosemary is a little bit too small. Okay, this is a uh, Winsor Newton Series 7, and I think this is a number one. So, get some schmutz in there. So 
So to start with, I want to make sure I get the panel lines. And to do that, I'm just going to load them up with the null oil. This particular area is pretty handy because it has a nice defined uh, structure. Um, what I don't want it to do is to bleed out outside of that area and form a like a an edge. So I'm going to kind of use the brush to blend that away. I can even use my finger. Uh, and something else you can do at this stage is sort of pull some of it off of there and streak it back in the direction of or away from the direction of travel sort of you know speed lines uh, this is sort of a you, you see this a lot in weathering uh, spacecraft even though it doesn't necessarily make sense because there is no wind in space there's no air traveling over the surface but you never know there might be in an atmosphere at some point and the idea is that you know, grime gets built up into the uh, into the panel lines, and then maybe uh, it collects moisture in there uh, as it, and as it's speeding along. Uh, that moisture spreads the dirt and grime across the surface. So that's that's really kind of what I'm doing here. Um, but I don't necessarily want to do that right now as I'm doing this. I mean, I guess you could. There's no reason no reason not to, except that I, I just wanted to kind of focus on the panel lines. And notice that sometimes I'll just go ahead and use my finger to wipe away um, surface excess. And again, wiping in the direction that I would want those kind of traveling grime stains to go. But, you know, finger's a valid tool. No reason not to use it. Mm, it's a little much. And don't be afraid to use your brush to um, pick up excess. Just quickly clean it off so that it can absorb excess... Uh, shade material. This is almost like doing a pin wash. And a pin wash is where you um, load up your brush and set the brush with the material, you know, the wash material at a panel line and then let capillary action draw the wash into the rest of the panel line. That sometimes works on these and sometimes not. The panel lines are so shallow that um, it can't always do it. I think I'm going to come back to that one later. Mostly you kind of have to just brush it in. I like how there's a lot of, oops, a lot of asymmetry in this uh, in this starship. Things aren't necessarily repeated exactly on one side or the other. So while this has these three openings, this one just has one one large one. And as I mentioned on the Millennium Falcon one, I did it a lot on the Millennium Falcon. If you get into real trouble uh, and you don't like how your wash is turning out, um, or maybe you have just too much on the upper surface, you can load the surface up with your wash, let it sit for about 10 seconds, and then just wipe it down. And uh, it'll pick up most of it on the 
that's on the surface and kind of act as uh, a detergent. You know, you can just wa wash it right off. Um, you can do that with Lamian Medium is even a better material to use because then it has no pigment in it as well to leave behind. But if you want more information on that, definitely watch the Millennium Falcon repaint video. That one's really a study on making the best of a bad situation. So I definitely had too much going on there. And I'm just knocking it back and making sure I don't have a really ugly line. Making the surface a little dirty is fine, but having like a defined line around that too would have been not good. Suboptimal. Okay. Yeah, it's harder to do on these raised panel bits because if you have too much, it'll create a big ring. And while you do want those elements to stand out, you don't want them, you don't want that huge black outline around them. You just want these to pop a little bit, that's all. And I can even go back, because of course I'm, I'm putting pigment on the surfaces of these. You see how that is? That's not what you want. Um, I can go back, and if I've made the surface, upper surface panels too dark, I could go back with the paint and uh, bring it back to the original color. And that would make it stand out even more from the uh, from the wash underneath it. Yeah, these big recesses are good areas for making sure that they get really dirty. You can really just goop the stuff in there, and it's going to look really nice. Proper. It'll look proper. Ooh. Oh, okay, I know what that is. Apparently, I got some paint over here when I was painting the uh, the cockpit structure there. That's right, I can work with that. I, now, I've already gone ahead and done uh, the underside so you can kind of see what I'm going for I didn't do this area yet but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this part up on my own and then I think we're gonna move on to adding another color shade this is sort of just the definition portion making sure that we uh, define all of the panels but I'll be back in a minute Okay, I've gone through and uh, done all of my black weathering with the Null Noil. And I just want to point out something. I, I was cleaning this panel, like I, I coated it with the Null Noil and then and wiped it off with my finger. And I noticed the paint started to chip right here and started showing through the other paint underneath. That is what we call a happy accident. I actually think it looks badass. 
I think it looks really, really good. Uh, when you do paint chipping, that's an ideal situation. That's what you want it to look like. You want to see the old point, old paint uh, coming through uh, the new paint. And uh, since I'm going for weathering, but I don't want to, I, I'm actually not planning to really do any paint chipping on this one. I'm just going to do the overall weathering. Um, having just that little bit of paint chip is perfectly fine. There's also a little bit of it up here too with these little rivet things and right up there at the leading edge same thing happened and I'm totally going to leave that because I think it looks good it looks believable and uh, it really adds to the character of the fighter so sometimes a problem isn't a problem at all it's a happy accident so anyway uh, what I'm going to be doing now is really just more of the same but this time I'm really going to focus on uh, kind of adding a little bit to these um, streaks. And this time I'm using uh, Citadel, this is Agrax Earthshade. Uh, between Null Oil and Agrax Earthshade, I mean, that's mostly what I use from that line. It's not the only things I use in that line, but it is, the, it is primarily what I use from there. And so now I'm just concentrating on adding more of the streaks. Uh, I'm also going to use it in these recessed areas to just add a little bit more uh, color. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do it back there. No particular reason, just arbitrary. Some of this is, well, most of this is just kind of feeling your way through and deciding what what seems best and what looks best to you and trying to make your best decisions as far as that goes. You know, the real secret here is uh, I always feel like I have no idea what I'm doing when I first walk up to work on one of these minis. It, it doesn't look at some point you go... I know exactly what I'm doing at all times when it comes to painting minis. You just don't. Um, everything's an experiment. Everything, at least for me, it just feels like I'm, I'm hoping for the best all the time. Sometimes I get it. Sometimes I don't. Uh, I learn things. I forget things. Um, you never know what each project is going to hold for you. Um, yeah. Oh, you know what? I could use... Yeah, fill that in. This is really just about adding a little bit more color to it. A little bit more variation, adds more depth, makes it more interesting course the more you do this the the sort of more uh, weathered it becomes uh, if you wanted it to be clean then you're going to want to limit the amount of this that you do but this is Star Wars nothing's clean unless you're in the Empire Just in case he's listening, uh, I just wanted to give a little shout out to my nephew, Isaac. Isaac has been playing X-Wing for a while now and has been asking me about repaints. Mostly he's been asking me to paint stuff for him. I'm trying to encourage him to paint his own stuff, which is primarily what I do when anybody comes to me uh, looking for repaints, or at least it used to be. Now that I, I make money at it, I... I dissuade people less. <laughs> but uh, the truth is, I really think everybody should try it. This is not rocket science. Um, anybody can do this, especially if I can. I have no inherent talent for this. I have merely practiced a long time. Uh, and 
you would be surprised at the results that you can get if you just have patience just try it just have patience you know uh, sucking at things is the first step towards being kind of good at things is a quote from a wise person I once heard All right, so uh, the only thing left here is the engine glow. And I think I'm gonna drop in a little gold yellow into uh, the afterburner there to get started. So one of the things you can do with um, these thin paints is really just sort of carefully fill in that area uh, and then as it dries it's almost like a wash it's just this side of a wash and uh, so then what will happen is it'll it'll coat the edges but also reseed into the uh, into the opening there and what you end up with is a uh, uh, kind of a hot spot of color down deep uh, with a nice even coating around the edges at least that's the hope because if you have too much paint in there it could dry funny and give you uh, like a little hole in the middle and so you want to avoid that um, so I was going to do this with the airbrush, but it's not really necessary, especially with this one. Uh, the glow, <clears throat> you can add glow to the edge of this just with a paint, especially with like yellows and, and oranges. They're so transparent right from the beginning that you can just build it up. And not worry about it looking too painted on uh, just like anything you know this is all about moderation and patience you know just your first coat you might not even notice that it's doing anything at all and really what it's doing is discoloring the uh, the paint underneath and that's I mean that's really what a glow does right it's it's not um, completely obscuring the uh, the color that's there it's it's kind of tinting it so um, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that you know if I wanted to get all crazy I could also um, yeah maybe I will just do a little bit you know I'm just I just barely have any on my brush and I'm going to add a little bit here, and it's just going to tint that portion of the wing. Oop, I don't want it necessarily there. I guess that wouldn't be that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Right. So it's really just glazing it. It's really just giving it this sort of hint of color. You know, really, it probably shouldn't be exactly the same shade as what's in there, but um, I think it looks fine, especially because of how thin that's put on there. It's really just giving a visual cue that you might not even notice right away that there is light being sort of projected onto that portion of the wing. So yeah, that's not bad. Um, one thing I see a lot of people do when they're trying to do ob object source lighting is that um, they don't seem to understand the properties of light. You know, light travels pretty much in a straight line. 
right? So the only way um, this outer portion of the uh, of the engine here would would actually glow at all is if there was um, you know, like flame shooting out of the back of the engine. And so we're kind of implying that that's happening. But if the um, illumination was inside this engine and not coming out of it, out from it, there really wouldn't be any glow outside here unless it was heat, right? Unless there was heat buildup and this whole thing was just starting to, to turn red hot, in which case I'm using the wrong color. I should use orange. Um, but that's not what I'm implying in what, how I'm painting it right now. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And, uh, and we'll call it. So that is it. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go shoot pictures, uh, which I'm going to show you now because time travel is weird that way. Uh, and that's going to be all for now. I really hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, I always hope that somebody hope that somebody gets some sort of use on these videos. Uh, it makes it so much more um, satisfying for me to know that I am not just wasting my time here. Uh, so that's going to do it. Thank you again for watching. Remember, uh, if you really liked this video, if you found it helpful, then you know, click like on the video. Um, and if you want to see more videos, subscribe. I do a lot of videos. I'm trying to do more. Uh, and the only way to make sure that you're going to see them on a regular basis is if you subscribe. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you all later.